Hi there, Phil Simbor for the USBGF. Um, today's tip is a video tip, how to use Extreme Gammon to help you understand and evaluate uh, checker plays. Uh, in this position, Red has a 6-3 to play. Uh, the first thing I do when looking at any play is I look at the score. In this case, it's a, a, a money or unlimited game because that tells me if I need to put more emphasis on gammons. I look at the position of the cube to see if the cube has been turned and how the play might affect my cube action. And then I look at all possible plays uh, to see which one would support uh, the best game plan uh, that actually I, I try and think about the game plan before I even look at all possible plays what's my best game plan to help me come up with the right play uh, in this case with the 6-3 I can play a racing game and uh, I'm up uh, 12 pips before the roll plus 9 with the roll a racing game makes a lot of sense uh, to play a racing game you're up in the race so race is a very good clue I can also play a hitting game I can a um, racing game I would move the pack checker out all the way hope not to get hit hope to win the race hope this doesn't get hit hope I can escape the back checker when you're up in the race racing is certainly um, the, a key thought I can also play a hitting game I can move a checker from the 13 and hit and I don't see uh, anything else that makes sense I could stop with the six and then leave another shot and leave all kinds of shots or a waste of three I don't see that making any sense at all so I'm down to two plays and I'm down to either playing a racing game or a hitting game well uh, playing a hitting game makes sense also I have more inner board points than my opponent two of my inner board points are down low so the odds of my ending up with a very good priming game are not great after I've made the two and the three point and have holes on the four five and seven point and notice priming was not one of my thoughts if I was playing a priming game I would could think about slotting the bar and hoping not to get hit uh, by the way hitting might improve a priming game also if he doesn't hit me back and I make that point uh, then I do have the potential to make a prime and a blocking game also which is the third type of game plan racing priming or hitting now I've narrowed it down to two plays and after I do that it's not totally clear which one's better I have a good argument for a racing game I've got a good argument for a hitting game so the next step I do is I try to figure out what will happen on his next roll the most common variation the most likely situation on each roll. And the best way to do it is to make the move and look at it and then say to myself what will he do? Well first of all all of his threes are great. They hit me here. Uh, four one makes this point. Two one six one make this point. Double one makes the bar point or the five point and he probably would make the five point. He hits me with a six five also from here. Let's not forget in addition to threes six five hits me here. Uh, double threes was a killer, of course. Uh, double sixes, one, two, and then he makes the bar pretty strong. Um, uh, five, three, well, all the threes hit. Uh, so he's got a bunch of good rolls here, uh, which is one thing I don't like about this. If he rolls the three, my, my racing game doesn't look so good anymore. And then if he doesn't hit me, let's say he rolls... Uh, mediocre bad rolls like 5-2 uh, that does nothing for him and 5-4 that does nothing for him and um, uh, then what and now I still have to safety this checker I still have to get this checker loose and he's probably like with a 5-4 he's probably moved up this checker and got more builders and he, he, he's still not hurt in any way um, so that's what I don't like about this play uh, the upside doesn't look real real strong and there are some downsides when he rolls any of those good rolls I mentioned now I take a look at the other play of hitting and I immediately see something very wonderful that can happen that he dances and I know that when you have three points made you square it three times three is nine so nine out of 36 rolls he won't even come in and I know that's wonderful because I'm very likely to cover 
with any 2, 4, or another 9. So there's 20 2s and 4s. There's 11 uh, 2s and 11 4s, but you can't count 4, 2 twice. So that's 20 numbers that cover, plus 6, 3, and double 3 cover. Uh, so uh, that's uh, 20 plus 3, 23 out of 36 times I'm going to cover. Uh, and uh, so that's pretty good. What happens if he comes in without hitting? He also has plenty of rolls that come in without hitting, uh, like a 1-6. Uh, it's not very good for him. And a 1-5 uh, is a pretty bad roll for him. And a 1-2 um, makes the anchor. It doesn't do much for him. He also comes in with 5, 6, and 5, 4, and uh, 5, 2 that don't do very much for him. So in addition to those nine dancing numbers, I see a bunch of other numbers that don't hurt me too much. What really hurts me is all, all fours, of course, I don't like. Uh, and a 5, 3 would also hit me, and a 1, 3 also hits me. So uh, there's 11 fours. Uh, plus a 5, 3 is 13, plus a 1, 3 is 15. 15 rolls hit me, but uh, when he hits me, is the game over? Am I in horrible shape? No. I still have some game here. I think this is better. Now, let's find out. The beautiful thing about the computer is you can hit a button, and I always hit plus first and find out that hitting is much better, but I don't trust uh, three ply. That's what these little three dots mean. So I highlight it, hit plus plus, which is the highest evaluation you can get before a rollout, and I can see that hitting is far better. Uh, 0.144, or maybe what a lot of people refer to as 14%, although that's not entirely true, but it would be a blunder to make the other make the running play but another way to look at it to see if I've missed anything to see if I can understand why hitting is better highlight both plays right click and do dice distribution and side by side now I can look at after my opponent's roll after I make the right play I can see how big a favorite I am on the nine rolls where he dances. These are, the, these are the rolls where he doesn't come in. And it confirms those nine rolls. In case you missed that, this graphically points it out. You don't have any real big upside with the running play. There's no rolls that make you into a huge favor. When he rolls his worst roll, you are plus 40%. When he rolls his worst roll here, you're plus about 85%. So you've got nine super winners. What about the rest of the rolls? Well, yeah, he's got a joker 4-4 four, four when you hit. Uh, when you don't hit, he's got a joker 3-3. Three, three. Uh, the joker is a little worse for you. Uh, they're both really bad for you, but the joker is worse for you. But it's, this is more than evened out by all these great rolls. And on this, this side of the coin, when you make the running play, there isn't that much that is really going to help you. That's obviously the biggest difference in the two plays his possibility of dancing and when he doesn't dance you're in in the mid-range of the 30 to minus 30 and in this case look at your mid-range it's all below 30 you're all down in the negative zone so if you have a chance to be way ahead and if things go wrong and he doesn't roll the dancing rolls your best rolls you're still if with most rolls you're in an okay zone as opposed to the other one where you have no upside and your OK zone is lower by about 20 points. So this is another good way, and you can look at each specific roll and see how it, how, it, uh, is, how it affects it for both positions. By the way, you can also, uh, by the way, you probably should hit 4-ply here and get a little bit better evaluation and change it just slightly. But then you can also look at the details. You can see how your opponent would play each roll and what your equity is after each roll. How after you make the right play and after you make the running play, uh, you can study this uh, more thoroughly. And you can also uh, look at expanded and see how he would play each roll and then uh, 
what your equity would be with your next response. So it, it, it gets pretty deep without having to move the position and look at every single role individually. It's all laid out for you with dice distribution. So I hope this helps you in your evaluation of checker plays in the future. Uh, this is what I teach uh, my students. I'm a backgammon teacher. Uh, the process is always look at the score, look at the cube, consider the game plan, look at every possible play, and then look, try to come up with the effect or the MCV, most common variation, after each possible play, and then study it in Extreme Gammon using tools like dice distribution. And there's other many other tools in Extreme Gammon. If you don't have Extreme Gammon, if you're a member of the USBGF, you can get a 20% discount when you buy it. It's been proven by independent studies to be by far the best uh, bot or the best uh, computer program for backgammon. And uh, so uh, go to www.extremegammon.com and get it. It'll, uh, it'll change your life. Thanks for watching. Thanks for your support of the USBGF. Uh, I have uh, over 200 videos like this that are available to members free. That's another reason to join the USBGF. So take a look at our membership benefits of joining. This is just one of them and a sample of what you get if you join the USBGF. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.